preparations for the Tokyo Olympics have entered the final stretch. For organizers, it's been a marathon of logistical and financial problem solving after the summer games were postponed for a year because of the coronavirus pandemic. With a month to the finish line, most Japanese still oppose the event. But as Paolo Montecilio reports, pushing through makes a lot of financial sense. Preparing for the Olympics takes immense physical strain, not only for the athletes, but organizers as well. Just ask Tokyo Governor Yuriko Kowike. She was hospitalized this week for severe fatigue after weeks of long meetings. She's been working hard to implement measures against COVID-19 and preparing for the Tokyo 2020 event. But I would like her to devote herself to recovery so we can finish the final stretch together. The 2021 Summer Olympics start on July the 23rd, after a year-long delay caused by the pandemic. But COVID-19 cases are rising in Japan, so many residents are asking, why bother? I don't understand why they're holding the Games. That's my impression. Who are they doing it for? I am suspicious of the government trying to push through, despite the pandemic. I think we must cancel. A third of the population say they want the games cancelled. A similar number want another postponement until coronavirus cases come down. Organizers have rejected those calls, given the amount of money at stake. Scrapping the games would mean Japan's $15.4 billion investment as host would go to waste. The country has spent an extra $2.8 billion in the past year alone on renegotiating contracts and measures to combat COVID-19. The International Olympic Committee would also have to refund $4 billion to broadcasters. That's two-thirds of the Games' revenue. Companies like Coca-Cola and Toyota would also get back the $2 billion they paid as major sponsors. That's not to say that the Games aren't already taking a major financial hit. Foreign spectators are banned, and this week, organizers say they'd cap fan attendance at 10,000 people or 50% of a venue's capacity. More than 3.6 million people have tickets to watch. That number will have to be trimmed by around 900,000 through a lottery. We will need to carry out lottery on tickets that have already been sold. For ticket holders who had been looking forward to watching, we express our sincere apologies. Officials say they originally expected $800 million in ticket sales. The new limit will cut that in half. But that's a small sacrifice to ensure both athletes and profits stay safe. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World. And Paolo joins me on set for more. So, Paolo, you mentioned Coca-Cola and Toyota in your report. Which other brands are betting big on the Olympics? Well, Mubin, this is the who, uh, who's who of the, many of the multinational companies that we already know. So their official timekeeper is the watchmaker Omega, having a clock at the Olympics, very important. So you'll see their branded watches and branded timepieces during the track and field events, uh, swim events. You'll also see their logos during basketball games, football games, other timed sports like that. Um, Airbnb is their sponsor for accommodations, so you'll see a lot of their marketing around the Olympic Village where the athletes and other staff are going to stay. We also have tech companies like Samsung, Intel, consumer goods represented by Procter & Gamble, payments by Visa, tech conglomerate Alibaba, China, not to be left out, they're also a major sponsor. Now they all uh, paid as, as much as $300 million each to be a sponsor of the Olympic Games. That also makes them a, a major sponsor for the upcoming Winter Olympics that are taking place in Beijing. As mentioned in the report, that's about $2 billion collectively, about 20 to 15 percent of the Olympi International Olympic Committee's revenues. Okay, so clearly a lot of money being poured in by these companies, and of course they do it for brand recognition at one of the world's biggest events. But given all the bad press that this year's event has had, do you think some of these companies might be running the risk of maybe negative marketing? Well, we've seen this during the pandemic with a lot of the sports leagues that had to suspend their seasons and then restart again a few months later. We saw that with uh, football, with basketball in the U.S. There is always an initial backlash, understandably so, because we are in the middle of a pandemic and people are concerned about athletes' health and everyone else involved. But once the games actually are on air, people do still tune in. 
And the Olympics, it's an event like no other, even during normal times, in a way that people love rooting for their home teams, people love rooting for their home country. So this is going to be extremely popular around the world. Estimates show about 4 billion people are going to tune in to the Olympics uh, when they're going on. That's a, more than half of the global population. And another advantage that it does have is there's no competition during those two weeks. Um, in the U.S., MLB is the only major sport that's ongoing, and that's during the regular season, and America's pastime is not as popular as it used to be. Basketball season will be over. The NFL uh, won't have started, the same with the Champions League here uh, in the U.K. Uh, so there's not a lot of competition. And as we've seen, um, live sports remains one of the most reliable source of revenues for broadcasters, even as a lot of their content moves to streaming. All right, well, that's about the companies. The countries, of course, also do it to attract more visitors, more investments. But in modern times, in more recent uh, events, the Olympics haven't really been all that profitable, have they? And then you throw in the added costs. What kind of an impact do you think that's going to have on the, on the Tokyo Olympics, but also on Japan's economy? Well, let's start with Japan, of course, as, as you mentioned. Japan's original budget for the Olympics when it first made its bid to host was $7.5 billion. But com uh, countries that host, it's a time-honored tradition for them to blow their budgets. Um, they've, they've now, the, the cost of the Olympics has now doubled to more than $15 billion. That includes the $3 billion that they've spent over the past year for COVID um, measures and to renegotiate contracts with sponsors and their other partners. Um, there's also $1 billion in ticket sales that the Japanese economy is about to lose. There's also $1 billion in business that restaurants are not going to have, hotels are not going to have because of the restrictions on fan attendance. Of course, we know that the Olympics, they have banned foreign fans from attending these games in Tokyo. Now, since 1960, the average cost overrun for a city is 172%. And what do they get out of that? A lot of these countries are saddled with these large uh, arenas and stadiums, brand new, that they don't really have a use for. Now, one success story recently is the Atlanta Olympics, um, in recent memory, I should say. Um, a lot of the parts of the Olympic Village that were built during those games, they are now being used as dormitories for nearby universities, universities in the area. Another, another uh, games that has potential to make its money back, so to speak, is Beijing. They hosted in 2008. They're hosting the Winter Olympics next year. So they're just reusing a lot of the facilities that were built during that time. But I guess as far as uh, the Tokyo Olympics go, a lot to lose, but even more if they don't go through with it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Paolo, for Thank your you. time.